Hello, my name is Eric. In this video about minivan conversion, I will present 11 designs that I would not recommend and I will tell you why. The motivation for this video is to help you choose wisely your van design. When you haven't really spent time and traveled in a converted van, it is not obvious to figure out which designs and features make sense and which do not. My reflection is based on years of experiences. Nowadays, we can see lots of laboratory van conversion development. What I mean by that is that those developments are more oriented on design optimizations and the look, rather than based on real van life experience. And when I say design optimization, I mean optimization of volume rather than optimizing for practicability. Here are some designs that I really would not recommend. First layout mistake, an exclusive outside kitchen. It is easy to picture yourself with a perfect view on a perfect day, cooking outside, barbecuing with a full kitchen, taking your time, cooking a nice meal. However, the reality is usually quite different. Those situations do occur, but it is not that often that all elements are in place to cook outside. You will often cook when it is dark, cold, raining, with mosquitoes, downtown, parallel park, or in a service area. Just think about rainy days. It is quite surprising how often it is raining. I mean, this is a lot of rain. And there is the sunset which occurs very early a good part of the year. Think also for some countries, the mosquito season. The bugs that you don't want in your cooking area are entering your sleeping area. Often, you have to cook in the dark just because you were not hungry and didn't feel like eating early. Your van must be like Arcadia in Resident Evil, which should offer you food and shelter, safety and security. Obviously to me, having only an outside kitchen does not make sense. You must have access to your food to prepare your meal inside. You need to easily access from inside your van, water, fridge, food storage, etc. Sure, the option to cook outside is interesting, but only as an option, not as an obligation because of your van's layout. Do you really picture yourself deploying long drawer in town, parallel parked, or in a paying parking lot downtown? Personally, I would not adopt such a concept. I much prefer this one. Second layout mistake. Reducing driving visibility for cabinets or other features. I really would not reduce the driving visibility for two reasons. The first reason is obviously safety. You will have to drive sometimes in dense traffic area. I really think that you will appreciate having optimum visibility. I think that depriving yourself of driving visibility is a really bad idea. Hence, I will not block any windows except the far rear left window, which you cannot see through while driving or parallel parking. When you look at the Vantour video, you picture yourself living in that van. But you must also picture yourself driving the van. You probably do not want to deliberately deprive yourself of visibility. Therefore, this should be a constraint to respect in your layout development. Driving only with side mirrors is an handicap that you really should try to avoid. Just think of parallel parking. When driving through highways that have more than five lines, you want all the visibility your van can offer. 
The second reason why I really would not reduce the driving visibility is that I would not deprive myself of a nice view. Isn't it one of the objectives of enjoying van life? It is quite enjoyable to have an almost 360 degrees view. With the use of window insulation, having lots of windows is not a problem. The principle is explained in my video about managing temperature in a van. Third layout mistake, storage planned only under the bed. Having your clothes under the bed or needing to go outside and open a door to access it is really not practical. There's nothing worse than setting up the bed to realize that you need a piece of clothing that is under the bed, or worse, to be cold in the middle of the night and needing to undo the bed, get the piece of clothing, and have to redo the bed. Again, in the morning, still in the bed, you discover an unexpected cold weather, but you do not have access to your clothes that are under the bed. Of course, you do not want to leave your sheets without your clothes. It is quite an advantage to have access to your clothes storage from your bed. Such a setup may optimize the space under the bed, but when it comes to use, it does not make that much sense. Napoleon used to say nice words, nice thoughts, but no good facts. You want to enjoy van life, make it easy and effortless. Fourth mistake, not using Reflectix or a similar as effective isolation product for your windows. Using Reflectix in your windows makes such a difference for comfort in the van. To have an idea of the efficiency of Reflectix isolation for windows, test removing a panel on a sunny morning. You will definitely feel the heat entering the van fast. Once, on a warm morning by the beach, I opened my door for a friend visiting and he felt fresh air from the night leaving the van. He thought I had AC. It is very efficient. I talk about this in my video about managing temperature in a van. The fifth mistake, not having a hard floor. When you have a small van, you spend more time outside than inside your van which is a good thing, but doing so, you carry a lot of sand inside. What is more annoying than having sand on a carpet and having no vacuum? Also, how often have I spilled liquid on the floor? Pretty often. Seriously, if I didn't have a hard floor, my carpet would be a mess. Another thing is how uneven a minivan's floor or carpet is. It is really uneven. Hence, it's much more pleasant to have a hard floor. Since you will choose the finish of that hard floor, it is going to be much more beautiful in your van. Having a nice and clean space is important when you live in a van. The sixth mistake. Not having an easy and functional bed and table setup. Here's how easy it is in my van to do and undo the bed including the sheets, and to install and uninstall my table, which can be put inside and outside as well. If it's not that easy and you have to play Lego or Tetris each time you have to go to bed or have a meal, you will feel you are on a camping trip. Van life should not feel like that. If so, you will get tired of that lifestyle, as you would with sitting and folding a tent every night. Having to go outside to set up your bed does not make sense if you want to be stealth. The reality is to be stealth, you need to be stealth. You have to park slowly, you keep your inside lights closed and you set up your bed quietly from the inside. You are in ninja mode. You really do not go outside. I have been stealth van lifing for more than 20 years. I can tell you that this is the way to go and I have never been kicked out of any of my selected night spots. I really cannot picture myself being stealth when opening the doors and playing Lego with module compartments. Also, what about the weather? When it is raining or when it is cold, you want to keep the heat inside 
not opening all doors to set up a bed or a kitchen. Again, it is important for comfort to have a setup that is easy and lets you enjoy van life. This kind of modular layout was developed with the idea of optimizing space but may not be as practical when actually living in a van for a while. Seventh mistake, not having a nice inside looking van. Open shelves are not quite beautiful. Using Rubbermaid container does not improve anything either. This statement is kind of weird, but it is not to me, because if you want to enjoy living in a van, you cannot feel like you are in a storage room or in a backyard shed. You must enjoy looking and being in your van as you would for your own. Plus, your van is your vacation toy. You want it to be fun, inspiring. I am not a fan of open shelves where everything may fall down on quick driving moves to avoid accident. How many times do I take a moment and smile with joy and satisfaction when I slide open my van door? This worth something to me. Eighth mistake, the use of too much heavy materials for your van conversion. Yes, your van should look nice, but you must also consider weight. Too much weight will have an impact on your suspension, your brakes, fuel consumption, and a loss of agility in your driving, which is quite dangerous. As an example, using a lot of heavy wood for wall covering may significantly increase the weight of your van, and that may not be a wise choice. Ninth mistake is a no-brainer to me, carrying propane or any other compressed gas inside the van. Such a decision, without having a proper and legal setup, is searching for troubles, and little troubles that is. I don't have to add anything more about that one. Tenth mistake not transferable conversion. You can convert your van without modifying it, like mine. I converted my van without drilling any holes in it. If you do so, you will save lots of money on the resale value of your old van and save by transferring your bed, cabinets and table in the new one. To learn how to do so, look at my playlist on van conversion techniques. Elevent mistake. Thinking converting a van is cheap. If you want to enjoy traveling, you do not want to waste money. You want to spend money on something that you will use for years. That means investing a minimum of money to make your van functional and enjoyable. In my video about cost and steps, you will learn how to invest gradually. The costs presented in my video include money spent on trials and errors. Since I made a playlist of videos and I should continue to do more, following my techniques and steps should allow you to save on those trials and mistakes. You should be able to spend less money than I have on your van conversion. There's a lot of people out there that are presenting really low van conversion costs to attract viewers. It seems to me that the reality is quite different. Look at my video. If you want to encourage me to produce more videos, share this video. I am sure that you have fellow van lifers, future van lifer friends, and Facebook group that might be interested. It is really more stimulating for me to produce videos for more people than fewer people. As long as there is a volume of viewers, I will continue producing videos. Support me by helping me increase the amount of subscribers. Experienced based van life and travel tips are also on the menu. Stay tuned even when your van is finished. See ya, my fellow travelers.